Oh, this is the Turner water bill. I can uh, deliver that for you. you and stop by the we'll, post? We'll, we'll drop these in the post office. You bet. I'll, since I'll, I don't drive. Okay, that's very good. We can do that. Okay, let's go. This was the first house built outside the city of Turner. My house. Really? The city limits was, was back almost to the road. And I had to uh, buy my own pipe and, and, and uh, from the city limits to have city water in my house in those days. Are we going out to Cloverdale today at yes, all? Yes, we are. Good, because I want to ask you a question when we get out there. Thank you. What are they doing this house over here? They've remodeled They're it. They're remodeling completely. It. A lot of that's going on. These are young men that are coming back to town to live after being gone for 10, 15 years. How nice. This sure looks clean and neat. It sure does. Okay. Um, this property here was all Henry McHenry. He had a dairy barn. Um, about um, right in here, the house was here, uh, uh, and um, then it was sold uh, to Lawrence as we um, leave Turner, we uh, leave um, the property where the um, wrecking yard is and the house that, where the Griffiths live was um, the Carlton Smith place. Is that the new house that was built? Yeah, where the new house was built. And the Aaron's property was the Marianne Matt donation land claim. The Aaron's is bought it from, from her. Now you're speaking of the of the, up here. Yeah. Now and, we're, and the the former name was Griffith? Well, yeah. The, the, the Griffiths live in the house now. Okay. But it was a Carlton Smith place. Carlton Smith, thank you. And then Aaron's is bought uh, from they bought part of this place from this piece of property, uh, uh, Eddie Aarons did and built this house. By but this was the Aarons property here, which was the domain land camp. This was the uh, road here into the first sawmill. It was a, they, when they cut Turner Hill. Huh. Now, take it easy down here just a little while. As long as we don't have something, you ain't got a car behind. You know Why don't you do? pull over? Right, and exactly. I've got my, I've got my lights on. I'm going to tell you folks something now that you can hardly believe. As we now take off, um, the road used to go down here on this piece of the property to here. We're now in nearing the Baker Donation Land Claim. Now slow down. Can we go up? Can we take a no, ride? No, 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 no. I'm just going to talk to you now. All right. Go go, go right here beyond this um, drive. You see here? Um, right here, my, our property, there was another street um, bridge right here into this property. This was the original road to Salem. Oh, really? And it went up the hill to the uh, Watson Gas Place and went back on the road and back down. Uh, the, um, now I'll tell this story now while we're here in, in the vein. Uh, when Delaney was murdered, uh, my gr grandfather, uh, great grandfather uh, William Harrison Baker and Jess Harpool is what my family boy said his name was. Oregon Historical Society tell me I'm wrong that it's Harpool, but I have a book 
of uh, Marion County uh, early settlers, and it, and it says Jess Harpole, P-O-O-L. So I'm sure. But anyhow, the writer wrote up the hill. Jess Harpole was spending the night. He lived in Jensen City, and he, and my grandfather, paid him three hundred and twenty dollars to bring him west. And I'll tell the reasons for this in a, a little later. But anyhow, the writer went up this road to the house, told him that Delaney uh, had been murdered. And Jess uh, and, uh, and Harrison, as they called him, uh, got on their horses and they uh, and then, um, went down to the spring where the men had tied their horses. And they saw that there was a crooked shoe on the one horse. And so they followed the horse tracks um, and they crossed Mill Creek down here where the bridge is, below the Prin as Anak. And they took the horse into the uh, um, excuse me. Uh, the delivery stable in Salem. Go ahead now, go ahead. I can't. When you can't. Yeah. And uh, they found out it was a rented horse, and that's how they tracked the murders of, um, of, um, and so when they had the trial, and I, a lot of this is um, just history. That my grandmother lived with us the last two years of her life, and I was 17 years of age. My sister don't remember her telling all these stories that I'm telling. And this is, the Baker line comes across right here, and there was a rock in that, out there, and when they changed the road, they gave, the Bakers gave them the right of way this way, and they got that uh, uh, old road, road uh, back into their property, okay? Now we're going to go up to Gath, um, and that's where they, my great grandparents um, built. Now, uh, that used to be a road right there that went up. The uh, Heron Cemetery is up here on top. Um, the Herons came here in, in 1843, and they were on, come across the, um, with Stephen Meek. Who got them lost out <laughs> going to bed? Huh. So Harrison was your grandfather, is that right? Yeah, uh, Har William Harrison. Okay, was my great grandpa. Your great grandfather or your grandpa? He was my great grandpa. Okay. Now the next place I'm going to show you is uh, <clears throat> my great grandfather. Uh, didn't marry till he was 37 years of age. Turn right here. I have rode down this hill on the top of a load of hay. This was a uh, dirt road? This was a dirt road. Uh, originally, I think this was the main highway clear through to Miami. And I'll tell you why. Uh, after my great-grandfather came here and settled up here, um, he had been born on the Ohio River. Go ahead. Uh, on the Ohio River, and had seen floods um, of the of that nature, and then he moved on to left home, and he owned a sawmill in Wisconsin. And lo and behold, in 1979, um. Uh, our minister uh, and us went to um, um, a convention in Baltimore, Maryland. I, I was designated. This was the, the uh, War Reform School graveyard. <clears throat> Go ahead now. This, now, right up here on top, we enter the Baker Donation Land Claim again. Um, my grandfather, I have the will and, and, all, and all the documents where the 
eight children signed them off to my grandfather their rights after he paid them their inheritance. Now we're in the Baker Donation land claim. Uh, this house here, go on just a little more. Okay. This was an open field when I was a kid. Right here is where we want to stop for a second. The, the house that you see right up there, see the, ha the house right? The red house? No. The, the house here was the roof. That was her, my grandmother's garden. Pull up just a little. Okay. Now you see the house. See it here? Yeah. That's the house they built. Built. They, um, my grandfather, uh, to pay the hair, the heirs out, he sold half of the estate to, to gas, and, and he gave each one of the um, of the family five hundred dollars. Go ahead. Was this a six hundred and forty acre claim? No, no, this is twenty three hundred and twenty. This was my dad's share of the property. Go ahead. Um, this is the right of way uh, right there. Back, no, I guess the right of way is here. There was 80 day acres in the back of that place. And then this is where they, you take the, the right of way here, and it goes back to the 80 acres and behind. This right here on this side, this spring was sold to the state uh, of, uh, of Oregon for the water, uh, for the, pen, the penitentiary, which was a reform school at that time. Now, this is, a, this is a, the division line of the estate. This is gas property now. Go ahead. Okay, just a moment. My great-grandfather, this, this country was full of coyotes when he came. He, he became a sheep herder, and where they ball, where Corbett Ballpark is, yeah. my grandfather killed um, a bitch coyote with five pups in a holly hawk in the hollow log right there. And he bought two, um, now when we get down here to this oak tree, in front of the gas place, we'll kind of pull off the road again. I shall do. Now this is the original house. Just pull off right here I have to stop. be careful because that guy's trying to leave, I think. the gravel is kind of crazy. Okay. Now the original house was was built here, where this house is. The barn was built up here, uh, and then the, the gas bought and built another barn right here, which they tore out too. The house here, this oh, there was two oak trees here when I was little. The one on this side of the road, and my dad tells that the yoke of the oxen used to be in the branches of this tree, it rotted out. It came across the plains. Wow. I thought that was kind of interesting. Say that again now. The yoke, yeah. wooden yoke, that yeah. was on the oxen, was in that crotch of that tree that it rotted out. Oh. Uh, I can remember the tree was smaller. Huh. Okay, now, we're gonna come on, um, I, I'm not sure that I'm right in this next statement, but the original school for this area, um, the, the school section, I don't want you to understand, when they plotted this country for settlers, they ever so often they left a, a half section for schools. Yeah. And this was was that Union Baptist School? Huh? Was that Union Baptist School? Do you know what the name of the school was? Yeah, I'm going to tell you in a second. Okay, sorry. Okay. Now, whoa. <laughs> About right here. This is the this is the beginning of the school district, and they sold it to Witzel. 
that's uh, the school used to be up on this fence line here, and they moved it over on 22, uh, the Wetzel School, and uh, when they sold it to them, and uh, my great, uh, my grandfather was one of the, uh, he was 21 years of age when he was um, uh, still going to the eighth grade, and uh, that um, uh, school year, he, um, uh, they had married uh, five boys, uh, they were on a big bunch of them, they were in their 20s, were still in the eighth grade. They had married five school teachers off in the beginning of that school year. He, and then he'd get a new school teacher and a boy and get married. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and so um, they went to school. Tom Heron was one of them. Uh, that was in the 21 year old, too. Uh, Tom Heron and Solon Baker were, were great buddies. And uh, they came up to the school, and when they walked into the school, look, you, uh, you can drive on now. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll just keep talking. They um, um, came in, and there was a saddlebag beside the school desk, but they didn't see any teacher. And so pretty soon a man showed up, he came in, and about five or six minutes after he ca called class to order, they began to uh, throw spit wads and shoot their, they drilled their, their rulers, and they would put clover seed in the rulers, and then they would flip them like this, and they would rat it to rat tat across the, the ceiling, and bango, a, a buoy knife. And he showed up, and he dropped it on the desk like this, and he just stood there and quivered. And he um, opened his saddlebag and laid two six-shooters down. And, and we're going to go this way now. And he, um, uh, they settled down and began in the same episode again, and he threw the another knife to the back wall, and they looked at him, and he had both six children in his hands, he said, I'm going to use these next. He graduated all those boys at 21 <laughs> out of the eighth grade. Got rid of them. What was the name of the school? Whitzel School. Whitzel School, thank you. And if you take this road back to where it meets 22, that's where the school was moved to. Do you know when it was founded? No, I really don't. Okay. The reason I ask about Union Baptist, there are records that suggest the first school in the area was 1857 called Union Baptist, and I didn't, I've got to verify that. Go ahead. Well, 67, you say? 57. 57. That would, be, would probably be right. If that's accurate, that would be before this time then. Thank yeah. you. Now. Um, apparently this was, the what we're on, was the original road clear to the Mahama. This one here? This road here, and, uh, let's see now, slow down just a little, keep moving. Here it is, right here. This, this here, this goes down to the coal place, C-O, um, C-O-L-E. And it's a big white house that's down at the end of it, and that was the overnight stage uh, stop for um, uh, the stage line when uh, when my grandparents and great grandparents lived here. Is it still there? Yeah, the house is still there. Did you, you want to go down to see it? Can you imagine coming down this road in a stagecoach? This is apparently the old uh, stagecoach uh, stop off. And uh, this is all no trespassing, so uh, 
If you look down the lane here, how it how it goes, it looks still like a stagecoach road. I'm riding my own stagecoach down this road here. Around the bend we go. Over the river and through the glen. Down here to, to own oh, no, and we, we can look back across to, to the coal plant. Okay, shall do. And since we've gone down that, I'm going. I was going to skip this piece of the story, but uh, uh, we'll. It was a first one. It was a roadhouse. Is that what you said? Yeah, it would be a hotel roadhouse. It was the coal place. Now, Mrs. Cole was a Carl. Was a Carlton Smith daughter, and she, she lived. Um, uh, uh, Fay Webb built her the house um, that was when we came out of the post office. The house is set there. She lived in that that house. With, uh, uh, now, when we get down here on this flat, we'll have to go down a little more. White house. That's a house. That's it right there. That's the overnight state. Is that well, the original one or somewhat built later? No, that's the original one. Yeah, I want to make sure I'm seeing it. Is yeah, it behind the trees down, now? I'm going to move down enough so we can see it. We're going to keep going. We probably should have. wonder if we should have driven up there. Well, it's kind of nice to get a view from here. Let's see. I've seen it before. I think it's before. Now we're heading to 72nd Street. Okay. David, I'm trying to map some of this on paper and reconstruct them there. My grandfather, William Harrison, great grandfather, uh, um, he was married um, second, second or third of January 1850 at 37 years of age, and. Um, Aunt Mary was born in October of 1850. Um, he owned a sawmill in Wisconsin, and when I went east to uh, Grove East uh, in 79, I spent a weekend in, Wis in, in Wisconsin at some people we knew. And Pauline wanted to go to Madison because her dad had come to this uh, country and he went to Madison first. Now, slow down, uh, kind of slow down. I think it's right up here ahead where we want to turn. All right, see where this T is? Yeah, I'll turn. We want to turn here. Now this... Mm, so this is, is 75th place. Is it 75th? Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, I'm wrong, excuse me. Here it is, 75th. Okay, we're, we're, anyhow, this is where we want to go. Now, this is the Reuben Lois Donation Land Claim. Reuben Lois. Lois. Probably, he was the older brother of the, um, of the uh, Lois um, and Clark Lewis. Um, thing. Is. Now, my family, my mother's people, are Ferris's in Virginia, and um, the Ferris's, the Buchanan's, which was President Buchanan family, uh, the Clark family, 
Um, there is a strip. This is Ferris donation, or not donation, um, Ferris property. This is the Clark family. The Clark family property in uh, in Virginia is still what 2,500 acres intact. My mother's first cousin lives here yet. And this part, this 400 acres of, of this piece. To the left. And um, is that to so, the left or the right? Uh, so um, from 1735 in the Historical uh, Society in Washington, D.C., according to Sarah Bell Ferris, who was in 1940 uh, was in that department of the government, she researched and what this is her story that. Um, um, Five men, uh, Edward Ferris, a uh, Buchanan, a uh, Clark, a uh, Lewis, and I've forgotten this man's name now. They uh, they fought in, um, with George Washington in 1735 um, Indian War. Uh, every time they, they went, in fact, they even, at an old age, they fought, and the same men went to the American Revolution. Uh, five different times. My goodness. They, they were all neighbors. So we know that Reuben Lewis, the, 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 that Lewis back there, had a son, uh, brother Reuben Lewis. It's possible that this Reuben Lewis is the same man. But I'm not going to go ahead now. That would be Meriwether Lewis you're speaking of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Upon further research, Reuben, the son of Meriwether Lewis, lived from February 14, 1777 to February 17, 1844. His father, Meriwether Lewis, died on October 11, 1809. The Oregon pioneer Reuben Lewis was born March 20, 1814, and died April 6, 1886. It therefore appears that the Reuben Lewis Pioneer is not the same as the Reuben, the son of Meriwether Lewis. This is so beautiful. Well, wait a second now. This Mill Creek here, right? There's Mill, Mill Creek, Creek yeah. right here now. Yep. Well, let's go on, maybe. Yep. Should be coming in. Wow. Around up here when it comes. Well, it looks like this place. Well. Well, anyhow, the, 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 the Mill Creek is the, the, the building point. It's been a long time since I've been out here. Weaver Street. Well, back there where that trailer house is, is approximately where, where the Reuben Lewis house was. It was an old house. I've been in it. I can remember my family going there. Now we'll go back to Turner now. We have skipped the cemetery. I was going to show you Reuben Lewis's grave. At Twin Oaks? Yeah, Twin Oaks. We yeah. can turn back and see that. Okay. And D Dean Cromwell's tombstone. Now, Dean Cromwell lived at Fifth and Whipper Road. And uh, I have a book called The Oregon Idol. It was printed in, in 1962. The first circuit rider to come um, to Turner in 1883, uh, his wife kept a diary, and the diary surfaced in San Francisco, we'll say in the six, early 60s or late 59, out of a trash can. Oh my goodness. Uh, Will Young's papers, when he died, went to the Presbyterian um, school in Oakland. And so um, 
the bum that got the diary and tried selling it, um, tried selling it to somebody that knew that Arthur Young was um, the son of Will Young's. And he, in San Francisco, isn't this strange? And they called and, and they came and claimed the diary and, and they reprinted the diary um, on Turner. Huh. And so I wrote them in 67 for a, a copy of the, um, of the book and they told me it had been out of print and they didn't have any. And lo and behold, April 68, UPS was at my door with a book and they won five dollars for it. And I have a, a used copy of the Oregon Idol. Oh, how wonderful! And I do not allow it out of my out of my sight. No. I let. Uh, I had Josephus. I loaned it to somebody. And it, it never came home. Yeah. And so I'm. That's, and there's a page and a half description of the wonderful day that Will Young spent at the Baker's, and, and he even told his. After dinner that day, they told a um, the um, uh, um, his impression of Oregon for the. It's been 30 years since they'd been in, uh, in Oregon, and he told all kinds of. He said this valley was full of red clover when he came here. Huh. And we know that the hay was up to the belly of the uh, of the horse as he as he rode through it. And the only reason why he settled on that hill is that that. Um, uh, Jess Harpole told her when the Sandy Ham got Sunday pants on and flooded the whole country. He said he'd lived in the water too long on the Ohio to, to um, be flooded again. Yeah, we might be just turning up here as well, pat it on. Uh, let's see, that one's... Go in by the red. Okay. You see red when you want. Now slow down when you go through. I will, but I'm trying to make sure no one's coming. Okay. They sure keep this up nice now. So this you is see the, that red stone that's, up, that's over there? Here's the tree stump, and then there's a two one. There's a red stone. Yes. That's Dean Crownwell's grave. Go ahead now. Now see. Keep going. Was there a lot of Masonic people in here? Yes. Well, right here's what we want. This this whole row of burial here, uh, down to that there stone, there's only two two people that are not bakers. Really? That one with the uh, round one is my great grandparents' grave. That's my grandparents' grave. Wow. That'll be where I be I'll be buried. Go ahead. Yeah. Keep going down here. Well, I'm going to be 100 feet from you when I'm buried. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, here is the Turner family. Here's buried. Turner. Yep. Hmm. All their children, grandchildren. I'm... Now, turn this way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay. Just stop here then. Mm -mm. I can roll down the window for you. No, I'll just be up. No, it's not. Uh, this grave is beyond the thing. That's Reuben Lewis's grave. Hmm. Which one is that? The tilted stone? Or? The one is be yeah, the one's this way. Uh, he and his two wives are buried there. 
Can you turn, go up, pull up and turn around and we'll go back out? I shall. You can actually make a, a circle out of here if you want. Okay. All the way around it? No, back, well, you could have gone the other way left and made a circle, but no, you probably better not go up there. I don't think that road is. Okay. You can just back up. That's okay. Um. There's McKinney, right there. McKinney grave. Yeah. He, he's the one that Whoa. traveled with the Turners across the Oregon Trail. Really? Yep. I've never noticed this. I'm going to walk around here now. I know what I'm doing before. You used to be a, a building here so they could hold, hold graveside services in. When I first came to Turner, this cemetery was not kept up well at all. They were just doing more. No, it wasn't. Now. Who does this now? Well, it's the well, Brindley family. Bl it belongs to the, the, to Brindley. the Brindley family. Yeah. Now, see that round headstone? That's the, uh, well, the Harrison grave. This is the Campbells, the Browns, the um, Lewises. And the West family. Yeah. Um, Aunt Mary married a Howd, and the Howds are buried there. Um, Martha married um, a Campbell, I think I'm right. Um, Emma married Brown and Cole. I got Mary, Margaret, Martha, Emma, my grandfather, his brother Thomas. Um, Aunt Minnie was a West, mm -hmm. and uh, Aunt Phoebe, also known as Hattie, uh, is buried in Eastern Oregon. And Thomas is buried in the cemetery at Shaw. Okay, we'll go through Turner quick right now. I love to drive. You do that. Well, sometimes you drive me crazy. Well, you, you know what? You know what? <laughs> you don't have far to go. I know. <laughs> Hey, notice the new parking lot at Turner Christian Church, a $52,000 redo of our parking lot. Oh, how nice. 35 years old, it was time to do it. Yeah. About a third of it had to be replaced, and they went all the way around the corner there. I notice that the Red Lion in, in Salem oh, has been completely too. redone. It was, it was in such poor shape. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to go there. Um, and the community gardens put to bed for the winter. It'll be more vibrant next year. Now, this piece of the road uh, get down here to the school sign there. Okay. okay, just slow down there for a second. Um, this piece of the road in front of me is in my lifetime. The road used to go over like this and around here. Oh, like a bike. Path. It went around here. I'm, I have a picture that shows the bridge that crossed right there. Hmm. My uncle and my son were baptized in that creek there. Excuse me, I have, I've just recently got false teeth, so I don't talk as good as they. You're just fine. You're just fine. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad that you. This is a treat. Thank you. Okay. 
That bridge was about where this house was. It went across the creek right there. Mm. Huh. And that's our new tea house in town. Yeah. We developed right there. I'm waiting for it to get property though. I'm waiting for it to get going. Now this is a condit house. The condits built this house right right here. This orange and yeah. orange and sherbet. Yeah. Archie Bones lived in that house when I was a boy. So how old is that house? That house? Yeah. Probably, probably was still um, uh, here in the 80s at least. And the Bones house, I think that's the one they've been working on. Somebody still owns it and come, nobody lives there, but people come uh, and take care of it. I think. Uh, Tinknell, one of the Tinknell boys owns a house and his son committed suicide and he won't sell the house. Oh, oh right. my goodness. Now, this house here, and the house is next to the church, and looked alike in my day. And they were, they were built uh, by Condit builders. And this is the original Presbyterian church. Right. Yep. The bill to this church is in the Fiji Islands. What? The bill that was that rang in this church, in this church is in the Fiji Islands, and it's on a it's on a it's about this high off the ground, and they can take it and, and pull the rope and, and they call the people in Fiji Island Church. So it's still a church bell. So what church <laughs> is it? Uh, this was a Presbyterian Yeah, church. but the one in Fiji Islands. Yeah, it's assembly of God. And that's what this church became before it moved to become yeah. a church on the hill. Where you all used to go, or do go. Mm -hmm. Now, where the house is, uh, turn turn right here. Turn turn left? Yeah, turn left. Turn left right here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lucille Ball. That was in a movie. She said, turn, the, turn the, right here. The, uh, this is the... My great grand, my great uncle Ferris owned this property. He owned this property. He owned that property. When he sold the farm in Cloverdale, he he put it in real estate and rented it and, and lived off the income of it. Go ahead. That barn, little barn there. That little barn was a full barn. Okay. Now, this. Go ahead. Now, slow down right here. The barn went to my grandmother's place was right here. This was the original schoolhouse in Turner. What, 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 where? Right here? Okay. The gray one? The gray so one. So I'm on 2nd Street and Elgin. The ceilings are at least 14 feet high in that house. Wow. And was the schoolhouse on the corner? Right here. This bit, this okay. was the first school. Okay. Now first school. Fifty-three fifteen. Elgin. Uh, Melvin, when you say it was the first school, you mean the public school or was yeah, it public a public school? First public school. Thank you. And that one, I think I know the date on, but I'll I'll check it out. Uh, can you pull into the intersection just a I little? I surely can. Whoa. Well, I see the car. How far do you want to pull in? Just got out a little more. Whoa. Uh, down there where the tree is, um, that's the. Uh, I'll, uh, uh, later, somewhere, I'll show you the picture of that house. That's where I lived till I was four years old. I was born in the house just beyond this house, the Peck house. And uh, it was a red house, and it leaked in the. And I, uh, I can, don't blame them for tearing it out. You can turn now and go this way. Okay. Now, do you know uh, anything about um, the Thomas family in Turner? No, tell us. Well, our old Thomas will cross here. Okay. 
R. O. Thomas was the um, railroad man in the depot at Turner, and his daughter was Hallie Thomas Endicott. And she, move, go on across here when you can. Now the original blacksmith shop was here in Turner. It where this cinder market is? Yeah. My yeah. uncle owned that years ago. He owned he, he ran Scallow, Joe Scallow. Oh. Uh, this was the dance hall. It's mentioned in several books. Sure. Uh, the Turner had a dance hall. That's the dance hall up there. Yes, I come forward. Yeah. Now we're gonna go straight on across. Okay. And see our new paved street? Yes. Both sides were just paved. Now, there, that was a hardware store right there uh, on that corner. Go ahead. Which, where the great house is? No. Yeah, the corner here, the bacon lot there on the corner okay. was a hardware store when okay. I was in Okay. Now, this is, Halle Endicott bought this enclosed Second Street and built that house. She was a retired school teacher. She came, she became the mayor of Turner, Turn. Now this is the R.O. Thomas house. So this, this house is... I mean, this was, this was Hallie Endicott's house. Okay. Hallie Thomas Endicott. Okay. And she was the mayor. And she was the mayor at one time in Turner. Now, we're going to go back that way again. Okay. Um... Uh, this was the Bones. Um, they, uh, they, had, they owned the Ford Barge, Arch, Archie Bones. There was Charlie Bones, Jim Bones, and Archie Bones. The Bones brothers had the, uh, and in fact, in the early pictures of Turner, and that building, turn go this way now again, please. Which way? This way. Yeah, Where was the Ford dealership? It was a Ford dealership. Straight right. ahead? Right here. Oh, right here. Okay. On the corner yeah. here. Yeah. All right. This was the um, feed store when I was a kid. The five-story. It still is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The five-story grain elevators were right here. Yeah. Just right straight over. That mill race turned the turbine right. that was in turn. It ran along right here. Now, do you want me to go to Cloverdale, take a ride? No, we're going to go that way, but we're going to we're going to make another thing. Turn this way now. Yep. Of course, you know this was the original Masonic Lodge. Right. We the blue, that. the blue one. Yeah. Yes. Now, the house is the sets there that's got the yellow in it. That house right over there. Yeah, kind of. That is the original Perry was his name, and um, he was the owned the original drugstore in Turner, and the Hillary place. And, we'll see, and the first telephone line ran from this house to the Hillary place. Huh. Carl Duncan lived in this house. This was the Cromwell house. This is the doctor's house. Is that who it was? Yeah, doctor's house. This was in, in that building. It was, he, it was his clinic originally turned here. Wow. Okay. This, this is where Cliff Pretty lives, by the way. Today. Yeah. The Thomases sold that house to Wes Smith. Oh, it was over there, and they built this house. Um, this house was built by Talbots, and she was a teller at the Turner Bank. Um, okay, so we had a pharmacy in here. Yeah. Opera and we house. had a, this, oh my, and a bank. Uh, uh, now, this was the Watson place. The Boneses bought it. 
through and, and all that land to the promise. Now the, they um, cross the bridge now. And then my family bought this, sold that house, as I said, over on the other side, and bought this place. And that house burnt in 1940, and Dad, my mother, rebuilt it out. This is the house that my mother first lived in when she came to Oregon. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wow. My grandmother, Baker, owned the house on that end of the street. And all this land at one time, not this piece of land, but all that land on between that and the creek was owned by the three people. Now, we're gonna go this way. Take a left? Yeah. Under lane. We're, we're heading for Cloverdale now. Well, Cloverdale, shouldn't we go down? No, we're going this way. Okay. All right. We'll There's a reason for it. We gotta go slow here now. Keep going for another few feet. Go on down to that red pumpkin. Now, there used to be a mill race that ran right through here. When I right down right here and there was a, a flour mill years ago at the this goes down and makes a kick and back into Mill Creek and where it made the kink that's where the flour mill was. Huh. In fact when I we uh, kept our cow and the uh, cows in this piece of the of the, this piece it was Miles Wynn and company they had their, there was a red barn here, a tin barn. They had their thrash machines in a storage, and, and that, where that well, road kinks, that's where the mill was. They finally got their landscaping down here. It's starting to look nice. Boy, it's beautiful. This has always been a natural park. Sure is pretty. I nearly killed a cow there one day. On purpose? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Turner Dump was on the other side of that road when I was a kid. And that land was just full of bottles and everything else from the high water. And this cow made a run for it. I picked up a, a white bottle about this big and hit her right between the heart and she went down. I was sure that at uh, 10 years of age I'd killed her. Now, we're coming into the Delaney property. This is all Delaney. Both sides of the road. Now, the big spring that I I'm talking about, slow down when you get beyond the house. There's a big spring that set right up there against the hill. That's where Turner first got its water? Nope, I'm gonna show you that next. Uh, that's the where they found my grandparents and just before found the horses tied and the Delaney house was here. And that's where they found where the horses were tied. Um, and that's from there they tracked them into Salem. I had breakfast with the owner of the new old Delaney house this morning. There's a lot to talk about at our next yet meeting. She wants to do some stuff with us. Yeah, now you know that just the narrow bottom of that Delaney house is the Delaney house. The Edwards has built the, the Italian and made it right, out. Right, right, it's right. It's on the other end of it. 3,500 square feet now. Me too. With all the new stuff. Uh, Connie, uh, Vicki Woods, who owns it, is open to having a tour. 
sponsored by us of that house. That would be so lovely. So Wouldn't we'll that be about, nice? Yeah, well, it'll be a public event. We'll talk about it. Now, slow down. See, it's just a little narrow piece. Yeah. On this end. That was the original Delaney house. Huh. Yeah. Huh. This is such a dangerous road, people. Yeah. Now, where are we going? Are we going to... We'll go straight on. Probably to Parish Gap, I'm guessing. Yeah, I would figure that. This is, just a, this is a nasty road here. Was this a dirt road when you grew up? Yes. Muddy, muddy. Now, this is a McKay property. Um, the McKay's What about the McKay's? No, it, I'm waiting for it. You see now. Whoa. I can't very well whoa too much here. Go ahead. McKay or McCabe? McKay. Thank you. Well, anyhow, the, the Turner Original Waterworks is right up here on top of this hill. Oh, okay. Spring on. It, 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 they had a great big uh, hole in the ground that they concreted for a reservoir, and that's what they, how they supplied the original water to Turner. My goodness. How interesting. Was it pretty good water? It was, a, it was good water. Any now we're going to go across the bridge and then we're going to go to Clover now. Shall do. People on this road are not forgiving. No, it's still, still country road. This property here was uh, was this bridge here was was uh, the Moonshine Bridge in Turner and the Third. You picked up your hooch from under the bridge. Oh my goodness! I'll never be able to go over that bridge again without thinking about that. This parish scrap road? Yes. Yes. Nice bull. I've only been to Cloverdale once, so I'm looking forward to visiting oh. it again. Really? Come on. That's where my that's where my husband is buried is in the Cloverdale Cemetery. Alright. This is the Delaney Sons house. Oh, that at the, David Delaney? Delaney, yeah. David, De oh my gosh, somebody, that house, that now that's a new house, isn't it? Is that no, nope, that's the old house. The original been remodeled. And has it been remodeled? Yes. Oh my gosh. They did not have that upper porch. Vicky will be. He just had columns on it originally. Well, the present owner asked me this morning, where was the David Delaney's house? She'll be thrilled to know. That's it there. Fantastic. Go ahead. It looks modern. See, now this is all Delaney land. Clear back to where we uh, we talked about. Did they grow flax in these? Uh, I have no idea what they, wow. they, they had enough land they could have had everything. Cloverdale, and I don't know that we will go because I can only tell you the story about it. Grandpa Cook lived in the corner of this road and Cook Road. Uh, Mrs. Walt Miller's mother was a cook. And I've eaten many a meal from her table. Um, as a kid, I, I used to shock hay for all kinds of farmers in those days. 
Well, anyhow, Grandpa Cook was the only white man president, the last chief of the Kalapulis that died in Cloverdale. And when my dad was about 16, Grandpa Cook showed my dad where the, the Indian grave was. Oregon State got wise, my dad knew where the grave was, and they would come uh, and want him to take and show them the grave. My grandmother, Ida Baker, Solon Baker's wife, had great respect for the Indians. She could even talk to them. In fact, she even had cooked breakfast for three years for an Indian chief. He'd come for breakfast. And she could conversate a, a lot with him in either Indian jargon or, or the words that she picked up. And so um, she did not believe that, that their remains should be disturbed. So she had told, had that indoctrinated into her three sons, and neither one of them would ever. Now, the mound field, that when we were over there by Gath, the mound field was um, that 10 springs that was in that canyon. That's where the Indians camped. They came down where the water, where the water gushes on the Turner Highway from off the hill. There, I should have commented about that to you. That's where the Indians came down, and then they went across that field and crossed the crook, crick, and then came up, uh, up, uh, up in that spring that we just, I said, well, that was their, their next night's camping grounds. Curse words. Yeah, probably was frustrated. So my dad only showed me where approximately the Indian grave was, so I have no idea about about it. And so many houses have been built out there that wow. I can't That's remember. So I hope it's not under somebody's. Other situation. than well, let's say. Since he hasn't been to Cloverdale, let's just take a short ride here. Go this way for a few feet. I have been. That's okay. Now, this is McKinney Land. Okay. It's now part of um, the... Um, we'll, we'll, we'll come back here to this place and then we'll... She's a lovely lady. This was, when Carl Schiffer moved off of the Schiffer place to there, and he passed away in the past year. Yes, yeah. he did. He and I went to school together. Now, this is Cloverdale School. Then he tried to sell me this piece of property when I, when I, when I was looking for a place to build a house. And I would have built there, but I had an uncle that was partially blind living with me, and, and he didn't want to, he said, well, I can't walk the turn from there, so I didn't buy. Now, We're going to go to Cloverdale Cemetery? Yeah, that's where I'm going. It's an active cemetery. Mr. Delaney's buried back in there. Yeah. I, I Henry, uh, Heidi and I came out to see Henry's grave, 
and there was a man, that man that's writing the book about Delaney. I met him, I met him out here. In the Cloverdale Cemetery, Daniel Delaney and his wife is buried. They are located on this raised mound in the back of the cemetery. And this is his stone. Daniel Delaney Sr. died 1865. Elizabeth McGee, his wife, died 1867. They were both pioneers that came over to the Turner area in 1843. These, these oak trees have sure grown since I've been here. Glad. Now, this country here, this is where my family comes from, Virginia. This looks just exactly like Virginia. Really? And Uncle George bought a farm right up here on the hill. And I, I often wonder why he settled a Turner till I went back east to my kinfolk and spent two weeks with them that I realized that he settled on land that looked just like what he owned in Cal in Virginia. This is beautiful. Yeah. My, uh, Somebody's brought cans out here and thrown them. Somebody's been up here drinking. Yeah. You? Well, when we bought the property, there was sheep over there, sheep there today. I saw the sheep and uh, the chickens were singing. This is such a beautiful place. This uh, was uh, erected to Daniel Delaney Sr.'s uh, memory. It's uh, at the entrance of the Cloverdale Cemetery. <clears throat> Peaceful Cemetery. Yes, it is, and what a view. Now, now that property over there to the south is the Staples property. Dr. Staples, Mary Staples, was um, a doctor, and she was married to Arthur Staples. Um, Mrs. West Smith was a Staples. Mrs. West Smith's cousin was Sarah Childs. Mrs. Morrison and my grandmother Briggs and my grandmother Briggs being a Virginian was um, accepted uh, as a real lady to this people. Mrs. Alex Morrison was the original Sprinkle Sugar company attorney and when he settled the um, Morrison uh, the Spreckle Morrison settled the um, Spreckle Sugar Company he got one million dollars without taxes uh, for settling the case. When Mrs. Childs uh, inherited the money from her sister she got seven and a half, half million dollars and uh, a lot of money then. Yeah, there was a lot of money then. They used to, about every two or three years, they went to Europe for the summer. They did a lot of things during the Depression. Now, do you want me to turn left? We'll go back this way now. Um, We're doing good. Anyhow, to finish it up, uh, that's why I wanted to come up here where the where Delaney was buried. Um, the other thing. It's 11 o'clock. You want to go see where the um, uh, Pleasant Grove Church was? Yes. Okay, then we'll, we'll go back. I'll take you there then. Uh, now, the Delaney, I mean, the McKinney property 
it is the Van Velde Heisen property now. If they still own it. addresses out here? Yeah. Yes. Postal. Okay. You can see you look underneath here. See the cows come underneath the road. They sure to do. The, to look the other that. pastures. Right there. Now, this is the original Hillary house. Right here. It wasn't here. You want me to go straight or take a take Go straight ahead. Go straight. The Hillary house was here where the Hennesses built the new house. They moved to the Hillary house down there and sold that piece of the farm off. So that house had been moved? Yeah, that house had been moved from here. Well, here it's paved, Mr. Isn't Gary. It? Get closer to Turner. Yeah, you go that I'm way. It's not paved. I just now, stay in if Turner. you go straight on this, you can almost go to Marion. Uh huh. That's right. Because you've got the railroad. They just go yeah. through it. Yeah, yeah I'd cross over the railroad down there. But we're going to turn and go this way. Well, they won't let us go through any other way. Look, it's a it's a dead end. Oh, I'm going to ask you a question. On Marion Road, there's, I call it the Fortress House. It's got trees all the way around it. It's got a whole bunch of barns and it's got a gate. Up here? Yeah, over there on. Okay. What do you want? Who is that? What is that? Well, the Kinks owned it the last I knew. That's a lawyer in, in, in sale. I call it the Fortress. What? Well, I can believe that. And I've always called it the sheep barn. The what? The sheep barn. Sheep. That barn that sits to the to the north of that house, that's always been there. Uh-huh. Before the house was. Huh. Now which way do you want me to turn now? Go this way. Okay. Yeah, the sheep barn. Well Now I... this was the CA Bear. CA Bear. He was a bus driver. Carter, and the kids made more fun of Charlie A. Bear's uh, see a bear. The house was here and they moved the house because of the, of the street lights. They moved the house back down there. Street it's a road. taller house. Street. Oh, the lights come on the road. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. This is, this was the, 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 the Funkston Farm. Go ahead. Now this is where John Remy Jr. lives. Did you know that, Gary? No. And he moved those places back off the road. Yeah. He built part of them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I know where we are suddenly. I thought we're, 
I was lost, but we're going out towards the high school now. Yes, we are. I you know we were what? Clear south. I got really turned. You around. know what? We're gonna we're gonna play we're gonna play. Uh, uh, was it Hansel and Gretel with you? Uh, yes. The original uh, Turner Memorial Home was a, an orphanage. This was the orphanage farm. The orphanage farm. Yeah, right oh. here. Who owns it now? Is this McNary. McNary was the original orphanage farm. I didn't know that. My goodness. They have a lot of land there to grow. Yes, big stuff. piece of land there. I guess they made, uh, used the food to feed the orphans. Wow, as I turned around, I thought we were heading straight south. I had no idea we well, we've made quite a few little well, turns. Well, I know you did, and I, I know That's this easy to get well. turned around. I just was shocked when I realized where we... You, you said, do realize we're going well, west said, right now. When you said John Remy, I thought yeah. you meant where he was raised out by Cloverdale. We're going to go straight off. We're going to go straight west right now, Gary. Now, the name Crawford. This was always called the Crawford District. The, the Crawford Homestead, according to my, to my knowledge, and I'm not positive, but this property here across from Cascade was, was the original Crawford donation land claim. Crawford Crossing. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, because Jay Compton, that's his family background is Crawford, so I'm guessing that's the same family. This was it right here. How about that? We're talking yeah. about our new housing development. Yeah. yeah. Now, where, where do you want me to go now? Go straight, straight across. You... I shall do. Now, we're back in McKinney property. There was two McKinneys. Oh, pretty The other brother, there. this is the other brother. And she, the woman was at the um, at the meeting, and, was, and this was yes. her. Her family. She was talking. This is the Tracy property. Tracy, um, Coleman Tracy's daughter lives on this house here, and Coleman's son lives on the other side okay. of the Ball property. Well, the Ball's own property out here. Um, Mrs. Ball was a Grandma Ball was a was a McKinney. Do you know where the old McKinney house is on Brick Road? Yep, that's one of the things I'm going to show oh, you. Oh, I'd love to see that. Thank you. We're just having a we're just having I've a good old time. I've always heard of that, and I've never seen it. My granddaughter was married in this church at Mission Mill purposely because of the family background. Now this is the ball property right here. Their piece of it in, in there. The ball of the ball family. The ball family. Yeah. yeah, the ball boys. The Turner. They ended up owning that. Bob and and El. Robert. They Elton. bought yeah, the, Bob their Elton. brothers. Yeah. Uh, their brother. Right. Out. Yep. Did they own the Chevrolet dealership in Turner? Yeah. Whoa. We want to turn here. Up. Uh, I've been told that Chevrolet dealership was the first one in the state of Oregon. Is that true? It could possibly be. I need to document that sometime. Okay, I'm going to have to uh, go up here and turn around. This that is would just, be significant. If this is true. just too dangerous to oh, turn yeah. around here. Now, Betty Jensen uh, family owned the property, did own the property here beyond this curve. There's a driveway up here as you turn the corner. Yeah, right I'll there. I'll be real careful. I promise. I learned in rural Indiana why they have roads like this because when they had the parcels of land, you know, they just built around the roads around the land property so they didn't go over. They didn't necessarily cut through people's land. That makes sense. Did I say it right? Or do the cow trails? Who knows? Indiana, well, I'll tell you, my grandmother told some yarns that turned out to be yarns. <laughs> and my daughter and my daughter-in-law have run uh, um, through the internet all kinds of 
research on Bakers, Ferrises, and, and Briggses, uh, which are part of my family makeup. And my grandma always said we were German, and it turns out we're English. We'll turn in here. Wonder whose house burned down there. Yeah, I see that. What road? Are we on Brick Road now? We are. We're on Brick Road now. That's cool. Follow the red, yellow Brick Road. I always wanted to see this house. Oh, look at the, uh, I forget what kind of cows those are called. We haven't seen the Pleasant Hill Church site yet. Maybe it's down here. Boy, people lived a long way out of Turner in those days. Hmm. When you think of horse and buggy. What kind of cows are those that have that long, that long, long hair? Long-haired cows. Oh, you, 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 you. Scottish. I think so, that's what I was going to say. You ever seen the Scottish Highland cows? Well, we just passed them while ago. They are really long here. Yeah, that's what that is. Yeah. They have to be because. Here's the big cow. Wow, look at that. That is that's the McKinney Do you know when that was built? It, it probably mid 1880s or something? No, it was earlier than that. Oh, okay. Wow. Because they beautiful. came here. I've forgotten now whether it's 44 or 48, the yeah. McKinney stamp. Isn't that beautiful? Wonder oh, where they got the bricks. There was a brick place over at Independence. It made bricks in those days. And they call this brick road. And it also did, uh, uh, you could buy crocs and so forth. Okay. That was 1844? It could possibly be. Well, yeah. the only, I'll check it out, but I know that the uh, Turners arrived in 1852, and maybe I'm wrong that the McKinneys came across with them. I, I don't know what to do with that, but it's well, still... Well, uh, when we get back home, uh, if you have a few minutes, come in and I have a, a book from Sarah Hunt um, Steves, and she is um, um, a pioneer family at the, up near Silver Creek Falls. And she and my uncle Abner wrote a book on Marion County uh, pioneers. I found something the other day. I found my grandmother's booklet on Turner. And my mother wrote all over it. Uh, things in the borders about mm, the house and the houses and, and the people and so forth. Well, we want to go on down to the end of this road now, figuratively speaking. Isn't that beautiful? That is just absolutely it is. beautiful. It's an estate. It is. You can see it's an estate. It's gorgeous. Wow. Look at this tree here. Wow. There's an orchard. to look at the trash across the street. And the gal that's writing the history of the McKinney's. Yeah, we want to turn and go this way. Okay. Maybe. Maybe I'll roll up the window for you. I want you to get cold. See, that McKinney history will be out soon. That'll be helpful. I've got a book called Under Her Wings. It's a compilation of all kinds of just the whole Dave, Oregon did you know history. There was a girl writing the history of the McKinney family. No. Oh, this is. She was here at our big event. It'll be published soon. And when she was here for our event, she talked about. Oh. Aha! Here, here's where the, where's here from where the original church was. Oh. Okay. Pleasant Grove. Pleasant Grove Church. That's the same. What road are we on? Is it Pleasant Grove, the road we're on? What's the road we're on? Must be. Okay. It's called Pleasant Grove Church. 
So was the church in behind the ce or cemetery behind the church? Or? No, the, church, the school was, uh, I think, was over here. It could have been there. I mean the church. I can't, I can't remember that good. It was just here by the cemetery. When was it moved to Mission Mill, do you know? They'll know. I, no, I don't. They'll know. They have it. Somebody putting American flags out. Yeah. Oh, that smells so good of of woods. These people live just like you and I. Yep. Gone. Now, where should I go next? Well, we can turn around now somewhere. Okay. Soon back to Turner would be good for me. That's code language. Okay. <laughs> You're such a brat. This is beautiful out here. Wow, well, Melvin, this made my day seeing this right here. Thank you. Well, the you said the church could have been over here on this side? No. no it's it on, on the other, the other side. side. Uh, what, either, uh, either side of the cemetery is what I meant. Yeah. It's been a long time since I saw yeah. it there. That's. You know. I was trying to gauge the, uh, the trees, how old, yeah. uh, old the trees uh, are. I would have said it was on this side, but I see that there's more space on that side, so I would rather think now it was on the other side of the cemetery. So this cemetery is older than the one in Turner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look at the stones. That's interesting. And this is one of the oldest cemeteries in this area. Be interesting, <clears throat> interesting to read some of those stones. See the dates on them. It's amazing they're still standing. I bet it was in here, church, because it looks more clear. Yeah, this is a good tree. That's what I was saying just now. Wow. Well, we'll go back by the, the brick house. They've done a lovely job of making it look nice. When I was a kid, the windows were out of it. Oh, so it's been restored. It's been restored. Oh. Um, I'm going to tell a story, and I'm not going to tell the, peop the name of the people. But very prominent people in Turner, when they were young married, were a bunch of, oh, well, anyhow. They would steal people's chickens and have chicken roast. And the brick, ch the big the brick church, was one of their their hideouts for their their roast house. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. Of course, I had family that was in in on it too, so I. That's why I'm not mentioning it. <laughs> <laughs> see but that's this a side here. Now this side here is not brick. Can you see that, David? Yeah. Plaster. So it's got an S on the side of the house there. Hmm. Uh, maybe it's just a decoration, but it looks like an S. Okay, let's see what this is here. Maybe it's just a decoration, but it Now, there are people living there now, right? Must be. Somebody drove out of there a while ago. Yeah. I, I think the gal that is researching this, she knows the family and has spent time here. There's a little house back in there. Wow. Almost looks like an English estate. Oh, it's just beautiful. Small. Just beautiful. Look at that tree trunk there. I mean, that, that cut off trunk. That's just quite a tree. Oh, well, they yeah, got a blackbird. I heard a blackbird. Okay, Robin. Well, I'm getting some ideas that we could, Yit could fill its coffers if we offered historic tours of the area. There you go. We'll just run Melvin's tape and just let him listen to them as we drive around. I have one thing to say I didn't get it out. We owe a lot to Reuben Lewis. All of us. Reuben Lewis? Lewis, yeah. Lewis. We owe a lot. Lewis, uh, is it L-E-W-I-S? 
L E W I S. Lewis. And uh, why? We have we owe him a lot. Uh, he and C A Davis of Thomasville were relate getting to shampooing. Now Abner Lewis married my aunt Maggie or Aunt Margaret. So I can that's really very much the story comes from both my grandparents, my great grandparents who were, were in, uh, Abner would be their son-in-law, Reuben, and there was an Indian, uh, there was a Negro that came to Oregon um, in 1849, and he did not know when he crossed into Oregon that he was a free man. And Old Travis was the town newspaper of the area. Um, the, um, I think it's Grover was their names. Uh, they rented him out to people and he was, became a, an efficient uh, um, ox team driver. And uh, he, um, they offered to give him his freedom uh, if um, he would make equivalent of 10 cord of wood in the, in the fence rails at 50 cents a cord. And so uh, he could get a dollar by uh, for driving somebody's ox team for a day. So he afforded, he hired Grover's son to cut the 10 cord of fence rails and got his freedom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, old Travis used to come to my grandparents' his house, and uh, he was famous. He had a, a string of dogs with him. Part of them were hunting dogs, part of them were just dogs. And he had them so well trained that they stayed uh, half of them on one side of the horse and the other half of the horse. And he carried their feet on the horn of his saddle, the bags, to feed the dogs. And when he went to my grandfather's place, and he would spend the night, and the family was more than glad, all the families in Oregon were more than glad to have old Travis, because he was the town newspaper. He could tell about weddings, funerals, and, uh, scandals, and everything else. <laughs> so. Uh, he would, with, now my grandparents has, had a four, four bedroom house. Um, my great grandparents did. <laughs> so there was at least a, a small guest room off the family, the family room or the, or, or the half parlor. And he would not um, sleep in the bed. He would lay on the hearth of the fire beside the, the fireplace, and that's where he spent the night. Well, anyhow, Davis and, and Reuben Lewis got to Shampoo. They had already drawn the line for the vote, and uh, Reuben grabbed Davis by the shoulders, who was British or English and pulled him across the line, thus, that's why we're in the United States. So that's why I have great respect for rumored laws. By the way, this property is still owned by the Lightas. He was Do they in, still own it? Yeah, uh, Betty uh, is still alive, and they leased the land out. He was administrator, administrator at Turner Christian Church. Pardon? I said he he was preached at Turner. He preached and then became administrator at Turner Retirement Homes, and um, he died about six seven years ago. There's a street by the Tabernacle named for him, just called Lida Court. Well, that's nice. There's about 65 acres there, I think. I think maybe one of their children or grandchildren lived there. I think, I, I think Mr. Baker deserves a lunch out. What do you think, Mr. Baker? 
be in the United States. I'll take you in the house and I'll show you some things. Do. It'll mean more today than a well a week or two from now. David and Jan, would you like to go out for lunch? Um, <clears throat> I'd like to see um, Melvin's home. Okay. So that would be good. Yeah. Now this was all Richie property originally. Richie. 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 The millinery shop and, shop and turner was was Richie, and um, there was two Richie families. The property that Lida had was Richie, was Richie land, and this piece was Richie land. Well, that's the road down to the house, right there. Here we go. We're going to the road to my house. Come on, my house, my house, my house. Right, I don't have to turn it. Turner Hills here were, were the, was this all Richie land, the hills? Yeah, this was all Richie land. Um, John Mickey bought it from Leland and Richie. Oh, wow. I want to ask you, I want to ask you whose home this is up here in the corner. That's it's John Mickey's. That big, beautiful home? Yeah, that's John Mickey's. That's owned by the Boson, Boson Blues. Remember, they came to city council. They're trying to sell it. This right here? Yeah, the big one with the big view. Oh, no, not this so one, the this one is, around the this corner. This is John Mickey's house. He's yeah. the man that subdivided this hill. Okay. But the one right here with the big Victorian view right there belongs to the Bosun Blues. They've been there about 20 years, I think, and they're trying, uh, they were trying to sell it, maybe I'm wrong. They've here. sold it. The, the house, the property that we made that decision on is. But that's a dip. They own several parcels up here. It's down to the left. It's a dead end. Down oh, to I know the what left. you, oh, I see it. what you're talking about. They yeah. want to divide it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, Jan and Dave, I know about property up here because we're dealing with land use decisions. People want to divide, subdivide, oh. rezone all the time. So sometimes I'm looking at stuff up here. I think this place here is so pretty. They keep adding on, adding on, adding on. Yeah, they've done a wonderful job of landscaping that yeah. and there's the corner. Up there too. Yeah, when I give tours, when I take care, I say, now, you're in for a big surprise. This looks like an alley, and it's going to be scary until we get by it. You think it's not, the road's going to You know what? End. We need a sign on this corner that says hidden, that well, says I hidden. Well, I mean, this, this could really be dangerous here. I mean, this is really. This is horrible. It if should, you're not used to it, boy, you could go tumbling down. Well, we need to say hidden driveways. These driveways. I would just say turn around and go back for your own safety's sake. I, I cannot believe owning a place right here. That is crazy. Well, it's almost as bad as owning something on Eastwood Heights. Oh, come now, Mister! Oh, look at, come on, look at the, look at the, the, uh, the steepness of all this. This is the one that gets me, right here. And then the, this road right over here. Yeah. I, that's what I said to her. I guess I shouldn't have said it. I said, don't come crying to me when you fall off the hill. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. The grade on this road is pretty amazing. Now this is my daughter's home right here. Oh, okay. And Jan and Dave, this you live here? across the yeah. street from- uh, My daughter Heidi yeah. lives here. And where She's does, a nurse um, practitioner at the prison. Where does Steve on live, Death who's on Row. the city council? Is he right next to you or something? Yes. It was just down the street. I'll show you where he lives. Okay, I, I need to know. I may. I've never mm -hmm. identified I've him. I've never course, been this, down here before. My predecessor mayor lives right here. This is where uh, Paul Thomas lives. That's where we met there. together, wasn't it, Gary? Did we meet there with him sometime? You were supposed to meet there. I think we did meet there. He, he asked us over and... I don't think I've ever been in their home. Maybe I was and just forgot. I thought we did. We may have. I know I was there and had a long talk with him. This development up here started in 69, where they started to develop it? Well, 
Bellevue, but this development didn't start till about 11 years ago. Yeah. The reason uh, I know it's 11, because my successor bought one of the first homes up here. It's the, I call it the pole position home. The one on the corner when you go down the steep grade, the big rocky abutment, that's the one yeah. he, he's now sold. Thank you for dropping me off. Okay. Uh, I want to show you... Uh, Steve's, Steve's house. It's that That's little greenhouse right, right over there. Oh, the greenhouse behind you or on the right, yeah. right over oh, there. Okay, right so there. I thought he lived up here, and you guys live where? Just right, right over here. here, right there. Cool. That's our house right here. Cool. I'm just gonna pull in the driveway. Now extracting me may be an interesting yeah. adventure. Here I'm gonna bit. get out so you can get out. Just a family that keep uh, keeps me in, in touch with me. I have a cousin in Calgary. I have Two cousins in Virginia. I have a nephew in Austin, Texas. I can go on and on. I got to tell a story. It's an amazing thing. I started out there. I was in 79. I was in Wisconsin in the morning. And then we went. My Pauline wanted to go to Madison because her dad went to Madison. And I stopped there. So we aimed the car from the town of New Star, Wisconsin towards um, um, Madison uh, on the map. We drove, we're driving this way till we got there. And we came along and signed a big sign and it was about eight feet uh, high uh, or seven and about 10 feet wide and it was made out of logs. And it said, sight of Baker's Sawmill. Really? So I am, Ma Pauline got, got, had me get out and take a picture of it, and I did. And anyhow, to make the long and the short of the story, when Janet, no, Sue, my daughter-in-law, she was running the one on the Baker's family, and she finds out that in 1850 October that my grandfather Harrison Great grandfather sold the house to his brother in law, the sawmill and timber to his brother in law for $4,000. Well, I know that he built a raft uh, in October, and I have the blanket box that he put on the. Um, 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 on the raft? On the raft. I own it. And. My son has got a new piece of, um, of maple. The, the thing went through the fire. I had a, I, we had a fire in part of our house. And so um, he's having, he's got the board sawed, but we haven't got it fi finished yet. But that's the, um, the um, um, <clears throat> anyhow, um, I went to the Oregon Historical Society. Here we are. My grandkids were supposed to come and mow, but they only can mow on Thursdays and Fridays. And so far, we've had rain every time that they were going to come, so I haven't got mowed yet. Well, today's Friday. And well, it's they not, may come today. It's not raining. Uh, uh, will you, well, you let, come in? Let me, let me back, back up so you can get in here easier. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. There, here's it. How's this? So you can get get to the walk a little bit easier. Yeah. Okay. We're coming. So did you build this house all at once or in pieces, you know? Well, I'd remodeled three times. And what year did you build this? I started in, in 47. Um, I had this, this is the first piece we had it on, is this breakfast nook. Right, 
Tommy. This is my breakfast nook. Oh, yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Welcome. Shut the door. Come on in. What's that book? This book here is um, Remembrances of Marion County Pioneer from 1840 to 1860. Oh, okay. Now, we were talking about the McKinney's. Reuben Lewis came to, to, to here in 1842. Alan Davy is the man that he pulled across the line. He was here in 1842. He settled in in um, uh, Almswell. Delaney came in 43. Both he and his son, Junior. Looney's came in 43. That's Looney Butte out of Jefferson. John Aaron, 1845. Pringle, Virgil Pringle, 46. John McKinney, 1847. That article, she was also lived here near, near Salem. Who was that? That Indian woman. That, Dorian. Dorian? The, this book, yet, it's hard to read because it's part of a diary. So you can just put it down like this and make copies. Read, um, start reading right here for a page. Okay. Thursday afternoon it was, was proposed we visit Baker's. None of them being members except Mrs. a Baptist, and the reason being that there were so many young people to be reached. We found them a very cordial, entertaining family. They are, they are pioneers, came across the plain 32 years ago in an ox cart. It was between the years that the cholera took so many of the immigrants, and Mrs. B, Mrs. B told of seeing dozens of bodies lying across the alkali plains. Our visit was pleasant, and we treated we were treated to watermelon, pears, apples, and plums. They, like most of these Westerners, lived bountifully. The Baker farm was surrounded by a snake fence, seven logs high. They lived in a picturesque, strong-built log cabin with low, solid walls of, la of logs and an overhanging shingle roof. The big, open fireplace and a wide chimney looked homelike and inviting. By the side of the fireplace were two deer horns fastened to the wall, be holding a rifle. My son has that rifle now. Really? I, I gave him the rifle. Uh, my dad broke the rifle. Mm. He broke the stock when he was a boy. And so um, my son uh, took and glued the, the stock back together, and then we sent it to a, a, a real gunsmith and had it replaced. Go ahead, I'll tell you something about the gun. After you're finished. And on the high mantel shelf stood the clock. Two corner cupboards held their supply of dishes. Next to the house was a storehouse for apples, so the smell of apples filled the whole house. Hams and everything else. They invited Jeanette and Will to stay for dinner and served a bountiful repast of roast pork, potatoes, vegetables, and fresh apple pie. After dinner, Mr. Baker put a big log in the fire and told them of his experiences as a young man crossing the plains. What was Oregon like in those days, Will asked. Well, we came here, said Mr. Baker. When we came here, said Mr. Baker, this valley was like a big open prairie with red clover and native grasses stretching as far as the eye could reach. There was a, fi there was a fine hay for cattle before people began coming in to plow it up and spoil it. All this oak brush has grown up since. The trouble with Oregon is that there are too many homesteaders, too, too much cattle. Now all the wildlife is disappearing. Mrs. Baker told of the sickness they had to contend with when nearly every family lost some loved one. After all those long years, her eyes filled with tears when she told of the death of her baby girl and how hard that, it was. That, that's not true. Huh? Because Aunt Mary, I, I can remember seeing Aunt Mary. 
and how hard it was to leave our dear one buried in that lonely grave in the desert sands. They started with fine furniture, chairs, table, and, chair, and dresser, but one piece after another had to be discarded along the way. She proudly showed them a little rocking chair and the only piece of furniture that she had been able to save. When they left to go home, the baker, bakers gave them apples, pears, and a smoked ham. Jeanette wrote, August 23rd, we return safely to Mr. Cornelius. After right, the, that's okay. enough. That's another one. Okay. Wow. That's very, very favorable. Yes. That tells it. And then Turner had sidewalks that they had to use. When the high water, they had to uh, go over the railroad bridge to get uptown. Where the Turner Fire Department is, They where they... North side of the fire was the gunning property, and the gunning property was four feet off the ground. And the house that they bought for four hundred dollars, they tell us that it's just across Mill Creek, so it has to be the gunning house. Well, that goes with my where my family story is. There, put it right there. Okay. Wow. So that's the book that they sent me. You can see it's shop worn. Uh huh. Oregon Idol. Mm hmm. Well, there's none of those uh, that you could find any other place. No. No, I don't think that. The, uh, I don't think that uh, maybe Oregon uh, Library, the State of Oregon Library, has one. I know Will Lamont had 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 had, has, had a copy. Of. And that was CB 1862 when that was printed. 1962 when it was printed. I got, I, my wife dated it. it they sent me the copy in, in, in um, there. I got it in. 1969. Mm hmm. It's in terms 100 years. You've never seen that before? Uh-uh. Did you, do you know um, Humber, Millie Humber? Her folks right off Delaney Road, they've got, she and her husband have property that her folks owned. Oh, I know she was a mudger. Yeah, I think so. Can I have um, that one for a second? Here's that bridge that I was telling you about. See, the new schools here, this is the old school. And the road goes round and over the concrete here, but that this road goes into the into the Turner campgrounds and then goes round back onto the highway. Huh. It's a little rickety, isn't it? Not gonna have the book of Surely. Seven. Now, this is the Turner First Schoolhouse, my grandmother's house. This is Mrs. Ike Small. That's the house that, uh, that is torn down. I lived to, in it till I was four years old. And we we're gonna have to make pictures, David. Mm -hmm. This is the house that I'm talking about. Okay. And that, uh, now this here is um, um, this is where the, the turnaround um, grocery um, cafe is. is that, uh, this is um, um, Henry Earl um, and Henry Earl. Uh oh, this morning. Yeah, I'll get. It. See the lamp over there on the, on the table. The lamp there? Yeah. Uh, Henry Earl electrified that lamp back in the probably 20s. Really? Really? Huh. You, it's an old Coleman. This was the, the wash stand to my grandma, Ida Solon Baker. And my wife and I took the, the back off of it. It had the towel bar. We didn't want. We we wanted it to look like that. 
Now, here's the bedroom set. This bedroom set's got a, a story and a half, and my kids are having a big go off. Allegedly, a man came and lived with Harrison Baker for a year, and he made that light, he made this furniture for, for my gra great grandparents. My my. Now see that chest of drawers. It's beautiful. Here's the rocking chair. This one right here mm -hmm. with the red cushion on it. Mm -hmm. So that came across the Oregon Trail. Mm -hmm. Wow. Get the bottom one up and off too. I want to talk about that. Is that uh, when Jackie Kennedy went through the White House, she showed a, a bold of material that was um, a, a upholstering material, material that um, was found in an attic in Pennsylvania. It was this same pattern. Huh. And I was going to, I had this chair completely tore apart and re-glued. It's been through two fires oh, of people. Goodness. And it got busted up and, and loose. And I had it re-glued. Re and I was going to have that new upholstery. Well, when I found out that that was found in Pennsylvania, I said, no, nope, it stays. That's, That's right. So that's why. I okay, you're gonna put that down first. Put those two down first. I protect it. Mm -hmm. So you still use it? Oh yeah, regularly. Everybody loves to sit in it. <laughs> would you like to? Would you like me to take you to lunch? Okay, I'll go to lunch. Here's here's the piece of my family. Okay. Well, we'll make a copy of that. What page is that on? Two o one. Well, anyhow, I have the, the clipping. The woman that you know, was with my grandmother when my dad was born, she died when I was, after I was married. And I have her funeral notice in here. Her name was Emma, Emma Jordan Pancos. Hmm. And she was Mrs. Tom Harrow. You heard me mention that before. Yeah. Grab your stuff. Okay, we'll just leave these two here. That's where I had to get up every hour, every every night when I went to bed. Every hour I got up and went to bed. And so um, my urologist wanted to put a permanent catheter in. And I had had catheters put in so many times trying to get myself straightened up. Uh, I went to church one morning and um, I was having trouble breathing and the preacher was preaching and I said to him, I'm having trouble breathing. So the pastor and two of the church board came down and prayed for me. I sleep Thank you, uh, I sleep. Um, last night I got up at 1.30. The night before I got up at 3.30. But I get up usually once and, and a night since then. God touched me and I, and, I, and I have no trouble breathing and I sleep. And I can't but say thank you, Lord. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Yes, I agree. Now I'll go potty. <laughs> but uh, that, that, was, that was wonderful to get to be a human being again. Oh, yes. How long ago was that? Oh, probably eight years ago. Mm. Okay, I'll bring the car up a little bit closer. Okay. And I will go out and take some video around the house.
She discovers that she's researching the bakers and my grandmother Ida said we were German and spoke German He's, and um, anyhow to make the long and the short of it he paid eight He paid, was paid $4,000 for his holding in, in 18 and 50. How much did he pay, 4000 They paid $4,000, the brother-in-law did, for the sawmill and the land he had in Wisconsin. That had to be a pretty good-sized piece of land. And he floated, he built a raft, and he floated to Prairie to Shane. Now, all this is grandparents telling the story. None of it's ever been written down. Um, he floated to Perry to Shane in October. Apparently, I'm saying that Aunt Mary was born and she should be, she, he was somewhere near Perry to Shane and he put uh, himself um, off and the child was born. That's my guess. I may be wrong. But back to anyhow. Okay, I'm going to get in here and get us a chair. May of 1851, and with a large herd of cattle, my grandfather Harris. And apparently, he ta had taken the um, four thousand dollars and bought the cattle. But he also um, Jesse Harpo or Poole, uh, wanted a jump start on the Oregon Trail. So he said we need to start two weeks early. So the wagon trains that year didn't leave for two weeks uh, at Independence after he, they started with, with this herd of cattle. And, um, How many cattle do you think? I have no many how, how much cattle, but we'll finish the story up with the cattle. And then, um, he had his two brothers with him. And I, and I often wondered how about the brother. Uh, Sue finds out that my, uh, his parents, my grandfather's, great-grandfather's parents, were in Missouri, just out of St. Louis, uh, on the river. And uh, uh, so that's how he got his two brothers. Uh, the, the older brother was in his 20s. And both, in fact, both brothers were in their 20s, but the older brother had been to medical school of two years. And um, he, whether he was married or what, we had, I have no idea. Although I have, um, in my lifetime, his two children have come to see me. Really? Mm -hmm. They were, they, uh, and so the story is, he took the cattle from Sweet, Sweetwater, Wyoming. My grandfather stayed with his wife and that small baby and brought her to Oregon. And his brother took the cattle to California to the gold fields. And he grass fed them north of Sacramento on the, the highway all that winter and sold them after he put the fat back on them. Isn't that something? And so uh, he, according to my daughter-in-law, he stayed in the gold field for two years trying to uh, make his fortune. <laughs> and finally he, he comes through to Oregon. <laughs> no, that's not what I said. Uh, Oregon. And uh, he finds my grandfather and he gives him $4,000 in cash. Oh my goodness. Isn't that, I, that had to be an honest brother because he could have went back east and lived like a king. Because a farm back there was a thousand dollars.
And so he pulls out and he goes to, to Le Grand, and he was a doctor in Le Grand for years. Huh. Is Baker, Oregon named after him? No. He's named after the, the Baker that was in Lincoln to cabinet. Okay. That Lincoln, that Baker could be, be a relative because, uh, figuratively speaking, the Bakers came to Oregon before uh, 1640 to, through Virginia. That my daughter in law is running back clear to Normandy. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's go in the door and see what's happening in there. I'm Tim Woods. When was he robbed in 1865? Killed right outside the front door here. There's actually pellet holes in the wall where the shotgun blast took place. And, and he apparently he came out of the house, he walked down the steps, and they shot him. And these holes. Wow. 